Hey guys, Tony back again, Horror in Touch. Hope you're all well. And a big Happy New Year. It's the 1st of January 2022. Off to a flying start today. Watched a few horror films. You know how it is. Uh, still got a few days off work. Not back till Tuesday. So I'll try and get a few more movies in when I can. And uh, today I'm coming back with my top 10 horror films of 2021. So this is only my opinion guys. There's been lots of horror films this year. Loads and loads. Um, I read somewhere that between like horror films, independent horror, uh, indie horror, you know, um, shorts and stuff like that. I think there's been over 1,500 that you can put in the horror category. Now, I haven't watched, you know, nowhere near that many. I suppose no one has really. But, you know, there's been lots of horror about. I think it's been a great year for horror. Some good cinema moments. And, um, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. Uh with Shudder and Netflix and, you know, Amazon Prime, all stuff like that. You get lots of good sort of independent horror and sort of, you know, Shudder originals, Netflix originals. I just think it's been a great year for horror and I'm looking forward to what 2022 is going to bring. So we'll get straight into it, guys. I'll just run off a few. I've watched like loads of what didn't make my top 10, but I've been to the cinema to see like old, you know, the M. Night Shyamalan film, which was a decent film. Uh, the Conjuring film, The Conjuring 3, which I really liked, but it didn't make my top 10. Uh, I've seen all sorts of other ones, you know, Fear Street on Netflix, uh, Power on Shudder. I thought that was really good. Uh, then I watched a really weird one, which you have to watch, probably the most controversial horror of the year, which I haven't heard many people talking about. And it's called... Uh, the scary of 61st and it's um, a really strange film about like a, a Jeffrey Epstein sort of um, conspiracy film which we know he, he didn't conspiracy what he done but it was like satanic and there was like possession and oh, it was just really sexual really controversial film in the royal family aspects as well it's uh, if you've seen it you know what I mean but Really strange film, that one. And loads of others. Uh, loads of films I wanted to see as well. I didn't get around to seeing The Night House, which I think probably would have been up there for me. But I'll, I'll get around to it in the next few weeks. And loads of others probably that I haven't watched. But we'll get straight into it, guys. Don't want the video to be too long. I won't go too much into detail. But coming in at number 10, guys. So this was probably the biggest horror film at the cinema this year. And it's Halloween Kills at number 10 for me. Now, I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't because they were talking about the story and stuff. You know, but I love a slasher. I love Halloween. I love the franchise. Uh, and I love, obviously, Michael Myers. And I just went there, you know, for a good time popcorn film. Just watching Michael tear people to pieces. And it delivered on that fact. You know, you're not going to go there getting a the Schindler's List. You know what I mean? It's not going to be you know oscar performances or anything like that or you know storytelling it didn't need to be really i was just more bothered about how many kills michael got in and stuff like that i know people were bothered about the storyline how over the all over the place it was which it was in parts but who cares it's a slasher film um did i care much about the other characters like tommy doyle and that coming back probably not it didn't bother me who michael killed as long as he was going around you know um doing all the good stuff tearing people up but yeah it was number 10 on my list this year like i say this is only my opinion guys it could change it after i've watched these films a few times but yeah i just went with halloween kills at number 10 for me then at number nine was uh one i've watched pretty recent over the last couple of months and it's filmed from scott cooper uh, it's called antlers I know a lot of people probably haven't seen this, but this is a real dark sort of stirring film, slow burn about this young boy who's sort of at school and the teachers are sort of worried about him. And it's sort of, a, I don't know, like a, a folklore tale about, you know, this monster and a bit like the Windigo sort of thing. And yeah, a bit of an Indian, but you know, just really dark, really stirring. And the monster is actually quite cool. So, I really enjoyed this one, guys. Uh, you know, great film. Uh, uh, that's at my number nine, Antlers. At number eight, guys, is uh, a crazy sort of film, I would say. I, I, I've watched this twice now, 
And at first when I watched it, I was like, what the hell? And it's a film by uh, Vladimir Yorosin. I think that's how you say it. Icelandic film called Lamb. A24 film now. I know probably a lot of you have seen it now, but this is a really strange one. It is, I suppose it is horror in some aspects, but a lot of drama aspects in this up until the final third. And it's just a really strange story about this uh, man and wife who are farmers and they're struggling to have a baby. And a newborn lamb is born on their sort of uh, property on their farm. And they sort of take it in as their own. And I'm not going to give it away. Uh, you've probably all seen it now. But yeah, this lamb isn't isn't what it seems. And uh, it's just a really strange, you like, gobsmacked. I was just like, when I first watched this, I was like trying to piece together. I was like, what, what the hell is happening here? Then at the end, it sort of pieces together and it's about, you know, love and relationships and being happy and sort of not not caring about how people look and things like that. And it's a really quite clever story. So, yeah, Lamb it my number eight, guys. It's a really cool, well put together film. Beautifully shot. You know, Iceland looks wonderful. And I thought it was well acted. And just really strange, strange film. Uh, coming in at number seven, guys, is A Quiet Place 2. Really love this one. More of an action horror, this one. Uh, you know, Emily Blunt and, you know, Cillian Murphy's in this one too. And it sort of takes, starts off straight from where number one left, you know, with these alien monsters. We've all seen A Quiet Place. I suppose we've all seen A Quiet Place Part 2 now. And they sort of learn how to, in this one, they sort of learn a technique how to try and defeat these monsters. And uh, it's about all that sort of stuff. But really gripping tale again. Uh, great acting. Great cinematography. The uh, score was really good. It's just, yeah, just... I thought it was really good, A Quiet Place Part 2. It was on par with number one for me, so that's my number seven spot. Uh, spot, not splot. <laughs> Coming in at number six, guys, is sort of a, a mystery sort of slasher film, I suppose, uh, from Prano Bailey Bond, I think that's how you say it. It's a film called Sensor. Now, this is a really cool premise. This is at number six, Sensor. Um follows this girl, I think it's in 1985 or in the 80s, and she's a British censor worker for film. And she's looking through all these films and she sees her sort of sister on one of the films and it sort of starts talking to her and her sister's been missing for a long time and it sort of leads into this mystery. And it's really good. It's quite gripping again and um, it takes you along on the ride. I think the acting's superb in this. I really liked it. It was just uh, sort of a different, you know, it had a real good 80s vibe about it, which I really like. And, um, yeah, just really cool film. I love Sensor. I thought it was really good. So that was my number six, guys. Like I said, I'm not going to get too much into the stories. Um, coming in at number five. Now, this probably, for some people, might say is a 2019 film, 2020. But it's actually released in, in this country anyway in January um, 2021. And it's uh, Rose Glasses, St. Maud. So I, I really enjoyed this. I know a lot of people didn't. So this is my number five, guys, St. Maud of the year. Um, really another strange sort of art house film where this in-home carer goes to look after this ex-ballet like ballet dancer, I suppose. And she's sort of trying to lead her onto the path of Christ uh, because she's a big, like, Catholic. And, um, you know, this dancer sort of can't walk anymore and she's drinking and partying and uh, having lots of sex and stuff. She's just sort of wasting her life away and she hasn't got long left to live. And this uh, young girl, Maud, is trying to sort of get her on the straight and the narrow. But it's sort of real, another really stirring tale. Um, great cinematography. Great soundtrack again. Well, some of the music in this is, yeah... It's really good, and I think Rose Glass for her first film done a great job of sort of, yeah, keeping you, not keeping you entertained like a, an action film, but it kept me riding along with the film, wanting to see what was happening. And that ending, you'll know about the ending if you've seen this film. It was just like jaw dropping ending. It was absolutely mental. But Saint Maud, I really loved. So that's number five. 
Uh, coming at number four, another one that a lot of people didn't like, and I absolutely love this film, and it's a Naya Da Costa, Jordan Peele production, the remake, not remake, reimagining of Candyman or the sequel to the original Candyman. Now this isn't nothing, um, Candyman from 1993 was probably one of my favourite slashes of all time, probably my favourite 90s horror film, really love it. But this film isn't like that at all. So you've got this narrative of, you know, um, is Candyman real? You know, it's, it goes down that sort of route. And a lot of people have forgot about the um, the uh, the backstory of Candyman and stuff. And this guy, he's a painter, and he sort of gets lured down this 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 sort of rabbit hole, I suppose, of the Candyman sort of legend and different forms of the Candyman. So it's not like a slash, straight up slasher. But when Candyman does come into play in this, he's really brutal. And I just think some of the um, kills in this was amazing. I really like the um, the atmosphere in this. I love the storytelling. I know a lot of people didn't with the um, you know the the uh, shadow puppets. I really love how they told the Candyman story with those. I thought it was uh, just completely different. I'm glad they didn't go down the sort of just following the Candyman from the original. I'm glad they made it completely different, which they did, which some people hated. I know a lot of people didn't like this, but I absolutely love the path they went down. And I thought it was great, you know, with the the artist and, he, and, his, and his sort of fiancé or wife, how that sort of led into family life and all the different deformities he was going through and the mental illness. But like I say, the kills in this was one kill which stuck with me for a long time where this sort of camera zooms out of this um, apartment building and someone's apartment's in the middle of this block and sort of, the camera zooms out and then you just see this body flying around in the room and blood everywhere and it's sort of the Candyman killing someone but you can't actually see the Candyman. It's just like invisible. It's oh, great. I, lo I loved it. I love the Candyman and that's my number four, guys, for this year. Could have been a little bit higher but, you know, we'll just go with that. It could change this but we'll just go. Number three is a film from James Wan or Wan. Um, Malignant, if you haven't seen this, this is great. Some people didn't like this either. A lot of people loved it, or I know. This is a great sort of throwback to that Jallo style. There's been a lot of them Jallo feeling types of film this year. I think it's come back into fashion. And this one, I don't want to get too much into story, but it's called Malignant for a reason. It's about this woman who's having these flashbacks and to murders and stuff that's happening it starts to happen in in real life and she's trying to piece together what's happening and something happens which if you've watched the film you know know what happens it's sort of got one of the biggest twists in it uh, you will ever see i thought james wan done a fantastic job really dark movie you know and uh, some great gore in this and it was just a, just a great story. I loved it. Uh, great jello feel with the camera movements and angles and, you know, that sort of stuff. I, I absolutely love. So, yeah, Malignant coming at number three, guys. That could have been higher, too. Uh, coming in at number two. This was a, a toss-up between the, my one and two. But uh, number two, Edgar Wright's Last, Last Night in Soho. Went to cinema to see this. Great cinema experience. Um, great story about this girl going to fashion college and she's obsessed with the 60s in Soho, London and she sort of starts to have these uh, I suppose dreams about this woman from the 60s who's played by Anna Taylor-Joy and uh, it sort of bleeds into dream and reality and you get this sort of mystery tale another one which is heavily sort of jello field with the uh, camera angles and the blood and uh, yeah, just just the feel of it. it's very jello. So um, yeah, I just thought this was great. It's my favourite Edgar Wright film, and I know he's done some great ones like Sean, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I really love this, and um, great feel about it. I know the production felt a little bit, I don't know, BBC, but on the big screen it was it was brilliant, and I think the story was captivating. Um, just just a brilliant tale. If you haven't seen this, guys, I highly recommend it. I don't want to give too much away. Um, you've got loads of little, you know, 
twists and turns in this. You know, you think it's going to be someone, the killer or the killers, and then it's someone else, and it sort of leads like that. It's got that jello feel about it. So it was, um, yeah, a great tale and um, really well done from Edgar Wright. So, yeah, last night in Soho, brilliant. My number two could have been my number one. Um, my number one is uh, a brilliant French film, to be fair. I'm sure you all know what I'm going to say. By Julian, I think I, I can never pronounce the name right. Julian de, Cor de Cornu, I think that's how you say it. And it's Tatane. Um, what can I say about this, guys? This is a French, about this French woman. Um, and she sort of has the, as a child, she has this car accident, has a titanium plate put in her head. And then it sort of spins off to when she's an adult. And just all sorts of crazy, crazy shit go down, basically, with her life. And she takes some very interesting um, paths in life, let's say. It's just it's very sexual. It's, uh, yeah, very pro provocative. Um, very gory. Very brutal. And uh, just some of the subject matters it touches on. But I think the acting was superb. And the direction, you can take this sort of, it's one of those sort of films where what you can take anything you like out of it. So do you think it's about mental illness or, you know, is this stuff really happening? Or, you know, it's got that good mystery feel about it. And it's just one of those films what I love, what are absolutely berserk. And you're just like, what the hell? I don't want to get too much into story, but some of the uh, gore in this is great. And like I say, the lead lady is uh, fantastic in this. She really is. She really deserves... Um, I don't know, some praise, but yeah, I just found it captivating. I've watched this twice now and I'm just like, oh, bloody hell, I, I love this film. So that was my number one this year. Like I say, I haven't watched a lot of uh, um, all the horror films, obviously, like I said, but I've watched a good few and quite a few and um, been a really great year. Uh, like I say, the, this, this list could change the more I watch these films. You know how it goes. Some of these films I've only watched once. Um, so the more I watch them, um, it could it could change. But this is just my my view at the minute, guys. So get in the comments. Tell me what you think. If it's if I'm mad or if you like the list. If you've seen any of the films. If you dislike any of these films. If some films what I haven't seen, you might have seen. Just put them in the comments, guys, and I'll try and get around to watching them. So, like I say, happy new year uh, from from Horror and Todge, and um, I'll catch you all for the next video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching.